So welcome everybody. Welcome to a new human experience podcast. Today is October the 21st, 2021. The uh, topic for this evening is faith. So um, I got a call yesterday from someone who, who like me is also grappling with uh, Franco's death. So in case um, some of you are not sure, Franco died um, on the 20th. And actually, let me backtrack a little bit more just to explain who Franco is. So for the Franco we're talking about is Franco Di Nicola. And um, for those who may not be familiar with him and his work, is I just want to say that every every soul, every one of us, you, me, um, everyone else out, out on the street on this planet, has a purpose. It and and that purpose, the 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 purpose that our soul wants to come here, is somehow when we got here, um, um, or before we got here, is translated into kind of a list of things that our soul wants to come here to create and experience. So that's what I mean by purpose. So purpose is what um, we have. And then the purpose is translated into a list of, of, of things that we want to create. We want to experience relationships, um, whatever, uh, experience that our soul wanted to have that's that's the purpose that i'm talking about so franco's soul came here to anchor in oneness and to that end franco has been creating that template of oneness through how he lived his life in private and in public and also the fact that i'm I'm here on this podcast talking what it is that I'm talking about is in no small part due to Franco's guidance, his, his um, wisdom. He selflessly shared everything that he, he know with me and with all of us, with the world. So this is who Franco was. Franco a, is a, a galactic soul who came to earth to remind us of our cosmic inheritance and our oneness with all of creation. And when you have somebody like Franco who came here with a, a big purpose, with a very um, determined purpose, just like Christ came here to anchor in love, Franco came here to anchor in oneness. And when you have somebody like Franco, who, who somehow um, managed to succumb to whatever the, the environment that we have on earth now, it's, it's kind of reasonable for, for some people, um, especially for the, 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 the person who called me yesterday, who um, started to doubt, who started to say, well, what really is going on? How come Franco died? And like he, he was absolutely in shock. And I totally um, can sympathize because um, yeah, it is, uh, I would say that it is not easy to try to understand this move. A lot of things that um, souls do from a human point of view, we don't see it quite the same. But from the soul's point of view, um, they have their own reason. So what the heck is really going on? And do we have any chance of cleaning up this mess? So to answer that question is really what I, I wanted to talk about um, on this episode. What the heck is going on? Um, I was told by by my team, by my my um, my by my soul, and also the 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 beings that um, my guides that is 
assisting me on on my journey here i was told and and those people i called the, them my team so i was told by my team that franco is not was not going to make it i think more than once and also um it was um two, three years ago, actually, I got that. And then um, about uh, beginning of the year, or maybe it was late last year, I, I, my team told me again that Franco's was not going to make it. And so because I heard it more than once, so even though from a humanistic point of view, I, I don't want to, I don't know how to, you know, process that news. But I think from a soul point, I also know that um, I am not surprised at all. And, and I'm really grateful that uh, Franco hung on until now because in, instead of dying a couple of years ago, which because um, Franco's body is, is, has a lot of, uh, um, well, um, a lot maybe, I don't know it's the right word for it, but because Franco has been grappling with uh, Lyme disease for a good number of years now, and he had actually seen a lot of um, specialists. And some of the specialists, he, he actually shared with us that some of the specialists looked at him and, and asked him, how are you still alive? Because um, from a, a medical point of view, it's like he, they, they kind of, the doctors kind of look at him as a, um, a miracle. So, so that's really what Franco has been working with these last um, six to eight years. It's, it hasn't been an easy time for him. So his body is in pain a lot, but I'm so grateful that he hung on until now because there is so much light on earth right now. There is, we have so much more energetic support on earth now that I know humanity is going to pull through. I don't think I would have had this confidence or even spiritual grit um, a year ago, but now, yes, I can totally see that. I know beyond reasonable doubt that humanity is actually going in the right direction. And we are just, as time goes on, um, we are each, each of us human beings are going to make the choices in our lives to, to create a future, a, um, a sustainable future where we can actually all begin to remember who we are. You, you see, um, from what I understand, Franco's purpose is not here to hold our hands till we all integrated 5D within ourselves. That, that was not his purpose. His, his purpose is really just to remind us of our um, cosmic origins, to remind us that we are one with all of the universe. We are not just here. We are not just this human being, this, this body. We actually have a soul and our soul can incarnate on earth, can incarnate on Mars, can incarnate, you know, in another galaxies, even in the parallel dimension, our soul is free. And that's something that Franco shared with us and, and, and really gave me, gave all of us a a lot of information and to do it in such a way, in such a grounded way that I would hear his message and trust him, trust that he, he knows what he's talking about. So that's, that's the magic of Franco. And um, so he showed us the way and it is, He's the one who is going to show us the way that and remind us that 
the oneness that we talk about, not just oneness um, as in the oneness within our body, not just the oneness um, with earth, with the environment, in that all of creation, everyone, everything is actually a all connected, connected and one, that we are simply different aspects of one creator. So that's, that's his, his purpose here is to show us that, is to help us grok that concept. And, and, and so he has done that. If you looked at all his podcasts, all the, the, um, um, the Tuesdays and the Thursday recordings that he's been doing um, within the last year, I, I forgot how, what's, which episode he's up to now. So it's like, yeah, he, he actually has um, chronicled all of that, all, all that work he's done is in preparation for when he's no longer with us because he has created that, um, that archive of information that we can go back to and review again to really bring it home to ground it within ourselves. This oneness, this concept of oneness that he is here to embody, that he was here to embody. And we all have to also understand one thing is that um, humanity is moving from third dimension to fifth dimension. Um, well, technically, we're going through three and then four and then fifth, but fourth dimension, we are, it's only a shorter visit. We, the fifth dimension is really where we are aiming at <clears throat> to, to fully integrate in. So third dimension is really about the body, the experience, who we are as a um, as one person. So that's why 3D is there's so much ego in it. It's that's that's the way it's supposed to be. Um, yes, maybe our ego, the, our ego um, structure is a little bit too 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 extreme for us to balance at times. But having a sense of self, having our ego, looking after and, and ourselves is actually the template, is, is how we explore the third dimension. But as we move into the, the, the next dimension, it is really to go beyond the body, go beyond the body. And in, in 3D, we look for leaders we look for gurus we so it's it's all um the evolution of consciousness is is like when we were um like i'm talking about thousands of years ago we very few of us actually um consciously know that we um, like we even don't think of ourselves as we don't even have a sense of ourselves. Gradually consciousness got to the part that we, we have a sense of self and we defend that sense of self um, very strongly. And then as we, and, and so as we grow through that, the, the, the things that are there to assist us to grow into that is that at first the um, our consciousness has couldn't even come into our body. It has to be carried. It has to be something that is outside of us. That's why 
in the in the Bible or in a lot of the the, the old um, religious texts, God is always outside of us. We couldn't even we couldn't even um, imagine God being within ourselves because consciously we are just not there. We couldn't we couldn't even grasp that. So God has always been projected to some somewhere outside of us, someone outside of us. And then as we grow, we grow into, okay, then, you know, Jesus came and then um, Buddha came, a lot of the other, the, the other um, people that have a, a very different understanding of reality. They have in, uh, they, they are ascended masters. They are called ascended masters. They are here to show us the way, just like Jesus here showed us the way that we actually, um, we can actually be connected again with our soul, with our highest self. And when we are so connected, we, um, even when our body dies, we can actually create another body for ourselves or we can um, walk into another, someone else's body. So all of this was made available because Jesus came. And then once Jesus made that template for us, there's actually a lot more of the other ascended masters it made it easier for the other ascended masters to come and show us. And so there is the kind of the, the age of gurus where we project our consciousness onto them. We learn from them. We give them our power. We, we don't, um, even though we follow those gurus, we are always taught that we have to be humble. We cannot be as good as them. And so that, that was the age of gurus. And now we're getting to the point where we don't need to have gurus anymore. That's why I've mentioned a lot of times that I don't want to be anybody's guru. And even Franco don't, is not a guru. He doesn't want to be one because we are humanity has gotten to the point where our consciousness don't need gurus anymore, especially the last couple of years. There's been so much shifting in our consciousness. There's been so many things happening behind the scenes. And um, we actually, energetically, we've actually finished with the, the, the old system energetically. Physically, we are still um, in the process of collapsing it, but energet energetically, we've already, we, offer, we already, be, um, the new movie, let's, let's point it, put it this way, the new movie, we have already begun. We are already in the new movie. It's just that the first act of the new movie is to clean up the old movie. So that's why we are seeing all this chaos. And I think that's why Franco hung on, even though his body was really not easy to be in his body. It's there's so much pain that he has to deal with on a daily basis. And um, when we go visit him, and the last time we were there, it was, um, he, we were actually there to celebrate his birthday. So that was the last time I actually saw Franco. And um, he, we all can see that, you know, even though he was, he was eating, he was laughing with us, but we also know that, you know, he, he actually have to make a lot of adjustments within himself to be able to still be with us, even though his body is not at, at his best. 
so that's that's really what's been happening behind the scenes and franco really know what he has done is sure of what he has done the work that he has put in he and he actually can see us can see us more than we can see ourselves he actually got to the point where he knew that it's okay for him to leave now um and so that's why it gave him um, a an opening to leave and it's not because franco you know succumbed to anything no not not at all um had he been um struggling yes absolutely but you know who has not who hasn't who is not struggling here i mean life on earth is still not easy life earth is um a master planet um all the 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 people that come here they are master souls if you are here listening to this just know that you are a master soul you are not um you know some some nobody you picked this you picked the hardest planet to to come on to play you you picked the most um interesting time on earth when we are doing this transition to come so you did not pick an easy time to come so you if you're here at this time now um i just want you to know you are a master soul and and yes you may pretend to be something else you may pretend to be fragile you may pretend to be um a nobody but um you are definitely not a nobody and i also want to mention that yes franco um it's actually some some of our leaders are here have been with us um but that does not mean that is their job to be with us all the way some of them are only supposed to be here until we make this transition and then leave so don't think of it as franco succumbed to something no he didn't he actually managed to stretch his stay until now to make sure that we are in a very good good space and place in time so thank you very much franco thank you for for being there to be a rock for all of us until there is so much light on earth right now that um you feel safe and you feel secure to to let go for the time being and, and i actually want to share um yeah my, recently my so my uh, team came to me and and told me that well i think that was maybe about a week or 10 days ago they told me that um franco is not going to make it and they told me also that yeah franco is going to be gone for a short time and then he'll be back to um keep going to carry on his work now what does that mean um i don't know i just know that that's really how humanity as a whole is going to be we all of us master souls we have a choice all the time we choose to leave because for whatever reasons it could be that our body may be compromised so we need a, a new body to come or it could be that we have um other reasons that we decided to check out and um but just because we decided to check out of one body that does not mean that no that's it we can't come back well you know what franco is going to come back not as franco um as 
another in another body just still franco's soul just not franco's body and i don't think he's going to take long to come back because that's what i've been told by my team and you know now <laughs> now i i kind of um have my my team has has a better track record because when they first told me that franco is not going to make it i'm like eh, i don't know what you smoking team <laughs> But now it's like, well, okay, if they say that Franco is going to come back in another body, then yeah, that's exactly what I choose to, 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 to go with. Um, is he going to come back as a baby or is he going to walk into another body? I don't know. I don't have that information at this moment. And when I do, I would be sure to share. However, I do know that you know, Franco is going to come back and he, he is going to um, carry on to do more of what it is that he is here to do because he has so actually did sign on for um, another 60 years at least. So when he comes back, then he, then that's part of his job to fulfill that the rest of that contract whether he's going to come back and identify himself as being franco 2.0 or to take on a completely different role i don't know right now i am simply grateful that he had been with us for all this time guiding us and so how do we proceed from here how, how do we all going to proceed from here? I already mentioned that we have a lot of support even now. Um, we still have, we have Franco as a support. I am absolutely sure that if you meditate and you um, have certain questions that you needed some answer and you call on Franco, I'm pretty sure that you would be able to get some assistance from him. And um, how to proceed from here? I have some suggestions. First is really to find out where are you at? Where is here for you? And how do you find out that? How do you find out where you are? Um, well, I just want to, to let you know that you are eternal essence embodied, meaning that you are eternal. You are spirit embodied. And that is a fact. That's not a, it's not a wish. It's not a hope. It's a fact. And if you don't resonate with this fact, then my suggestion is then ask yourself what ideas have you taken on what beliefs have you taken on that have you um not believe this fact so that would be the the work that would be when you find out what those ideas and beliefs that you have taken on in order for you to not resonate with this fact, then you would be able to start to uncover and recover your own divinity because we each and every one of us is eternal spirit embodied. And this for me is a fact. It's not something that I um, it's not something that I even doubt. I'd have no doubt whatsoever. And the other way that you can find out where you're at is, um, I believe it was um, Jason Estes that, that kind of shared a, um, a very quick assessment on where you're at. So his... His definition of 3D, 4D, and 5D, the, the, or what the, how do you know where you're at? Um, if you're 
if you have pain in your body, if you have any physical pain or emotional pain, if you have pain, whether physical or emotional, then you know you're in 3D. So work on supporting your body, work on um, looking at how come your body is in pain, because pain is a symptom of disconnection. It's a symptom. So your body gives you clues. So work on supporting your body to let go off and to resolve any physical pain. And then once you have resolved the physical pain and then look into emotional pain, do the same for your emotional pain is to dissolve your emotional pain. And how to dissolve your emotional pains? Um, there are actually just two major principles. I just want to talk principles and um, two principles to, to really dissolve all emotional pain. The first one, I can we call it free will, is to really know that free will is... Um, is paramount. It is one of the most important thing to understand that you have free will. I have free will. Everyone else out there, everybody has free will. So that is a, a cosmic truth. And any emotional pain that you may have, it is because you somehow did not honor this cosmic truth. You, a lot of the times we, um, we need other people to agree with us in order for us to feel like we are validated, like we are right. But the thing is, that's not, in accordance with free will. Free will means you choose what's right for you. You have that right to do. So does everyone else. And when you don't do according to this, then um, energetically you are creating blockages for yourself. You are creating um, karmic consequences for yourself. So free will. Ask yourself this question. In, so is it, how is it that um, I'm not respecting my own, either my own free will or someone else's free will? there's usually some, some part of that that is responsible for any emotional pain. And the other thing is, um, and the second principle is really love. And when I say love, I, I'm not saying romantic love. I'm saying pure love. Pure love is no love that knows that you and the other person is like you and the other person and anyone else are simply another aspect of you. When you live your life according to this principle, then um, you can actually start to let go of a lot of emotional pain. Love does not mean that the person you love has to be in relationship with you. They may not even want to be close to you, but pure love transcends all that. When you know that, when you can look at someone else and feel that love for them as though you feel it for 
yourself. And you can look at yourself and you can feel the love that you feel as though you're looking at the person that you love most. When both are true, then that's pure love. Then you know that this kind of love can transcend any emotional pain. So those are really the two major principles to resolve any emotional pain and probably would assist in physical pain as well. <laughs> so, and um, last but not least is really, I want to talk about faith. So how do we proceed from here? With faith, of course. So what is faith? Um, I just, I want to give you my definition of faith because you know, there, there may be a lot of other understanding of faith out there, but my understanding of faith is this. Faith is really when you are in alignment with God's will. So, who is God? Well, we are all, each and every one of us, an aspect of God. But collectively, all the souls collectively is what I would call God. So faith is when you're in alignment with God's will. It means that you're not just, actually what it means is you, you know what you want. You know what your soul want. And you know that whatever is happening out there is actually um, a combination of what all of the other soul wants as well. So what we are seeing out there is really everything that all the souls wants to see. So faith is when you know that because you are God, you're an aspect of God, that whatever it is that you want, no matter what is showing up outside, that eventually you will be able to get what you want, what your soul wants. So whatever it is that's showing up is showing up for you. In the end, it will all work out for the best. It may not work out the way that you expected it to be, it may not work out this, the, um, the way um, at, in, in the timing that you want it to work out. But in the end, it will work out the way that you, your soul wants. And it is when, so it is like, um, I think of the, um, <clears throat> I'm quoting a, a movie now. I think it, it was, um, oh, I forgot which one it was, the name. Of, uh, I think it was Endgame, um, Marvel movie, where Doctor Strange kind of look at all the possibilities, but uh, there's only one possibilities where everyone gets to... Um, like where everyone gets the, the ending that is right for them. There's only one possibilities out of the billions and trillions of possibilities that, that he has looked at. So that's what I mean by God's will is that there are trillions, trillions upon trillions of possibilities out there and God's will will be done. Everything that 
is going to everything that we want, that each soul wants to experience, each soul or where we want to end up, we are all going to get there. It may not play out the way that we expected it to or envisioned it to or at the speed that we wanted it to, but it will all end up exactly the way that each of us want. And that is God's will. And when you align yourself with that, then you walk in faith. Faith does not mean that you have no doubt and does not mean that you have no fear. It just means that no matter what shows up, no matter um, what emotions may be per percling beneath the surface, as you walk in this journey, this human journey, uh, you know that your soul is there to guide you. And when you align with your soul, that everything is going to work out. Um, I have no doubt of that. So that is faith. And that is how I suggest all of you to proceed is to um, align with your own soul is to actually really look within yourself to see that eternal essence within yourself, to see beyond the, um, the fake self. Because all you think of as you are this human that has this name and you have this profession, that's all just... That's, that's all just a role that you took on, not even forever, but just for a, a period of time until you, you're done with that. And then you go and play with another role, play with another set of circumstances. That's all we are here to do. And when you align with that, let go of just walking the, the straight and narrow and just being human. When you really know that, yes, you are in a human body, but your eternal essence in this body as well. And you know that you are an aspect of God. And you know that all the other souls out there are, are God as well. And they are you as well. And they each one of them love you more than you will ever know. This is pure love. And they all respect your free will. They may not show it in the way, but when everything is all said and done, every person's free will, the free will of the soul, not the free will of the personality, of the role that you are playing, that I'm talking about, the free will of the soul would have been respected. When you know all of that, then there is, and that's faith, and just walking in faith to just do what comes up for you to do. So today, what came up for me to do, prepare for this podcast. Tomorrow, when I wake up tomorrow, I will know what it is that I needed to tackle that day. So that's how we each proceed each day is to be who we are from the inside and choose how we're going to show up in the world, how we're going to live according to the guidance of our own soul and to do the best that we possibly can, humanly can, and know that that is good enough and let go of any um, guilt, shame, whatever, because human beings are not perfect. We're not here to be perfect. We are here to 
have this human experience in and and we are also this eternal soul as well and that part of the fun is really to be this eternal soul and we we know what we know and then we um, we have to work through this body and this body sometimes don't work with us sometimes actually a lot of the times try to sabotage us but all of this is actually part of the fun it's part of the journey and when you know that you all you have to do is simply go within and do the best you can to reach and see that eternal essence within yourself to connect with that with that part of yourself and to live each day to the best of your ability from that part of you in this human body and that's all anyone can ask of us and that's what i wanted to say on faith 